the time to listen into this YouTube live. I am just going to double check and make sure that I can see what you all are seeing. Give me just a second. Welcome, welcome. If you're deciding to join us today for this live, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. And I'm trying to make sure that I can see what you all are seeing. So give me just a moment. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this YouTube live. Today for this there live. we go. Thank you. There we go. I can see myself. So I just want to give a shout out to the uh, Neva, I think, I think it's pronounced Neva Lomason uh, Library in Carrollton, Georgia. They are doing a great job over here. This library has quite um, a history. If you ever happen to be in Carroll County, Georgia, which is southwest of Atlanta, about um, it's about an hour southwest of Atlanta. It's the same city where University of West Georgia is located. If you ever have an opportunity to make it over to this area, check out this library, Neva Lomason Library. It's beautiful, beautifully uh, put together. Um, I'm using one of their conference spaces today. When I did my last live, I also used uh, one of their spaces. They actually have study rooms. Um, this is a beautiful library, well done, well done. Bravo, Carrollton, Georgia, West Georgia. And um, I really like it here because um, it's peaceful, but it's not deserted. People actually use this library. I've seen all kinds of people, all races, all uh, ages, older people, younger people, you know, from the littles, as a matter of fact. If you happen to hear a little background noise today, it's because the way the conference room is situated is right near the front door. You might hear some little kids coming in all excited, which is great. I love to see little kids going into a library excited about being there. Um, I was raised in libraries. That's just part of our life. When I was in Chicago, Illinois, we had um, a lot of libraries all over the place, but they were not fancy <laughs> like current libraries are. They were just places that help books that we could check out. But now these libraries, even in rural areas, this is not rural because there's a university here that's pretty well known, but it's next to rural. Even in areas like this, there are some really nice libraries sometimes. Um, there are some very wealthy benefactors that have donated to this library and similar libraries. So. Even if you're in small town USA, please, please, please patronize your local library because um, they need us. <laughs> um, the, I've heard in some places, in some countries, they don't have public libraries at all. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever lived anywhere where there wasn't a public library. I can't imagine what that would be like. And so, um, yeah, so I just wanna give a shout out to uh, Carroll County, Georgia, for what they what they've been doing with their public library system here. It's part of Georgia Pines. If you happen to live in the state of Georgia, you'll know that many of the more suburban library systems use what's called the Georgia Pines system. So even if you are in, um, I think um, I think the Cal County uses Pine system too. So um, if you're familiar with Atlanta, you'll know that Atlanta's like here in the middle, right? And then there's several different counties all around it, right? So I'm south of Atlanta. So Atlanta is here, I'm south of Atlanta, but there are even counties over here to the east of um, Atlanta and even some to the Northwest of Atlanta. I think Cobb County might be on Pine system where you can actually borrow <laughs> uh, books between libraries, even though you're not in the same county. Um, through the Georgia Pines Library System and Carroll County as part of that system. So it's really uh, convenient for people who do go, go around to different regions of the state and they wanna be able to still use the local library. So I just wanna give that shout out. This is important to me because I'm a lifelong learner and um, I believe that um, the library has impacted my life in great ways from when I was a little child on up till adult, adulthood. And of course, my kids love libraries too. So 
I really uh, want to just give a shout out and say thank you for letting me use your conference room <laughs> for the sign. All right. So the reason that you logged in, if you are watching me live, is probably you wanted to see the continuation of my journey and talking about uh, plant your seeds of transformation and how perfectionism is not good for you, <laughs> especially if you're a person recovering from trauma. I specifically speak to some of the issues that Black women leaders have to deal with, especially as they're recovering from trauma or trauma from trauma <laughs> or from crisis. I specifically have spoken to some of these things in past uh, episodes of Plant Your Seed to Transformation. And I've interviewed other people on this topic too in some of the past episodes. This year, I have not done any interviews, but last year I did. And so you can find those at plantyourseeds.show or just search for Plant Your Seeds of Transformation on Google, on YouTube, or any of the podcast platforms like Spotify, Apple, Pla Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, pretty much any of the pod catching apps. So whatever your favorite app is, iHeart, Amazon, um, Audible, they have podcasts too. Our podcast is on there. So any of the podcast platforms that you prefer to use, please look up Plant Your Seeds of Transformation and you can see past episodes. Now, caveat, <laughs> um, some of the episodes may only be on the audio version on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or those places. Some of the pod chasers or pod, um, they call them pod catchers. Some of those apps only do like really older archived episodes. So you may only be able to see, see or hear the new episodes on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Um, and then on YouTube, some of the episodes that are on YouTube are only on YouTube. I had um, a technical glitch <laughs> and wasn't able to catch the audio from at least one of the past episodes. Most of them are both on YouTube and on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Most of them are, but you might see a, a few that aren't. The other special thing about Spotify is they let you use um, music in a innovative way. So some of the episodes on Spotify, if you're a Spotify user, are a little different. <laughs> and I was able to put a little creativity in there with a little bit of music. And if you like that, and definitely use Spotify to listen in to Plant Your Seeds of Transformation podcast. So today I was hoping to get an interview guest on here with us today, but they're not available just yet. So I'll let you all know uh, when they're going to be coming on with us. I'm not going to tell you their name and all of that in advance. You'll find out when they get here. But know for sure this person, I had the opportunity to meet them and hear them speak Um and I was like, you've got to talk to our audience. Um, this particular person is a writer and they write about topics similar to what we talk about here. Um, they talk about, sometimes they talk about productivity and how that is impacted when you have trauma that you're dealing with. And I definitely want you all to hear from that perspective. Again, this conference room is located near the front of the building. So you may hear some background noise from people talking to kids, exclaiming to a door opening and closing. And I apologize in advance for any um, background noises that aren't being filtered out by my AirPods. Um, <clears throat> also in my last episode, you may have noticed that I was looking up <laughs> the entire time because I had the wrong camera on, but I double checked the camera this time and make sure I have the correct camera pointing at me this time. So um, hopefully the audio is good this time and the video is also. That's what we're trying to do here. And another caveat, you may see me distracted because you know windows are everywhere. So I can see everything. I can see everybody coming in and out of the building. I can see the people on the outside. I'm gonna try my best to stay focused, but every once in a while I'll see, I'll see a squirrel AKA just something cute and distracting and I might look away, but I promise to come back to you and focus on what I came here for today. So I wanna make sure that I review with you all what we talked about last time, because you all need to know, y'all need to know what to expect. 
I think a lot of times people are uh, listening to the podcast and they have no idea. People that are new to the podcast are listening and they have no idea what I've talked about previously. So I want to give you a bit of an um, overview of what we talked about previously. Now, if you do go to plantyourseeds.show, P-L-A-N-T, Y-O-U-R, S-E-E-D-S dot S-H-O-W, plant your seeds dot show. If you go over there, you'll get a chance to check out any of the past episodes. You can look at the guest pages to see um, who the different guests were, you know, where, where what they do um, outside of when they spoke on <laughs> previous episodes. And um, you'll also be able to see how you can donate if you would like to donate to the podcast. You can also see, of course, what I talked about in the last episode. If you scroll down, it'll say latest podcast episodes. And if you scroll down, it'll show you um, the headlines of the latest episodes, including the last one, which was on the 10th of August, 2023. Resilience, how you can prepare yourself for the unexpected. Now, of course, you cannot predict unexpected things. You may be able to predict the fact that unexpected things are going to happen. We already know that. If you're a Christian person and you've gone to church any length of time, you will have heard people say things along the lines of tomorrow's not promised. There's no guarantee that unexpected things aren't going to happen. There's just no guarantee for that. Nobody can promise you that. And if they are, (laughs) they're lying to you. There are going to be unexpected things that I can guarantee you. There will always be unexpected things to happen, but how can you be prepared to recover from those things? And so that's what we talked about in the last episode. We've actually been talking about that all of this season, season four, and today will actually be episode four of season four. But in episode three, I did talk about how you can prepare yourself for the unexpected. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about that episode, but you can check it out yourself. Now, in addition to being able to access plantyourseeds.show to either watch or listen to past episodes, you can also read the show notes. I gave key takeaway points about the episode, and I do that for almost all of the podcast episodes, I usually have some type of show notes that give you more background and more information. But specifically from the last episode, this is the most important thing that I wanted to share with you all. Please watch or listen to episode three because it goes into a journal prompt for you. And I'm gonna just mention that to you today. If you watched last time, did you do the journal prompt? Was it helpful for you? I'd love to know. If you uh, want to reach out to me, go to plantyourseeds.show and click on the contact form and you'll be able to share with me whatever comments you have. I'd love to hear. But I'm going to read you all the, the journal prompt because I think that this could be really valuable for you and I don't want you to miss out on this. So I'll read the journal prompt to you and then you can go over and listen to episode three to get more background information, more detail about the journal prompt. The journal prompt says, When thinking about what resilience is, how do you see yourself and what you've been through compared to those definitions? Create your own definition of what resilience looks like for you. A lot of people are going through major, major traumas and crises, sometimes compounded traumas and crises, where things are just piling on, like relatives just dying, like one after the other, after the other. I've been through that. I know other people who've been through that. This this is something that happens sometimes, but how can you be resilient from it? And so in the last episode, I got into the definitions that I found for what resilience is, which you can just look that up on Google. It's nothing groundbreaking. I just shared it on the podcast because I wanted you to think about how do you define resilience for yourself. So that's the journal prompt for last time. I'm not going to do a new journal prompt this time because I feel that that is super important for you to think about for yourself. So today's episode, excuse me, I need some water. Today's episode is a little bit more laid back because 
I really want to kind of recap what I've been talking about this season, season four, for Plant Your Seeds of Transformation. But I also want to kind of prepare you or prep you for what you can expect down the road, because this topic of being able to avoid being perfectionistic in the midst of dealing with major um, crises or major traumas in your life. This is super important for you to think about. And my goal here is to help you become more self-aware. So I'm not trying to do anything um, that's super complex. I don't wanna confuse you. I want to help you focus so that you can get what you need out of this. I am not self-serving here. I'm not doing these podcasts so I can be on camera. As a matter of fact, I shared in previous episodes the traumas that I've been through. Um, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily share in a lot of detail, but I shared some about what, what me and my family have been through because I knew that my vulnerable sharing could potentially help somebody else who may be through something similar that's my purpose, to be a help, to be a blessing. And I am not here to glorify my trauma. That's not my purpose. My purpose is to help you see that just because you are dealing with traumas and crises, A, doesn't mean you're going to be there forever. The storm will pass. That will pass, rather. The storm will pass. B, when it passes, Who are you going to be after the dust is cleared? Who are you going to be? And we talked about that in the last episode, episode three. So my purpose in this wonderful technological age of lights coming on and off by themselves, here we are with no light. So give me a second to see if I can fix that. Uh, There we go. I just needed to move around a little bit. I love it. So yeah, people have to make sure that they think about these things in advance. And we talked about this in episode three. When you become more self-aware, you understand yourself better, then you can deal with these disappointments, these traumas, these crises better because you've already been thinking about it. And in taking the time to think about it, it helps you prepare yourself, right? So again, I'm not gonna get into a deep dive on episode three. I want you to be able to listen and get what you can out of that. I hope it helps and I hope that you'll um, leave a comment at plantyourseeds.show and let me know. If you happen to be on Spotify, um, there may be a survey or a poll either on episode three or, or in previous episodes, if you'd like to leave feedback there. Sometimes some of these podcast platforms like Spotify let you actually leave voicemail messages. I don't know if it's working or how it works. Spotify has changed some things. They bought out another company. And so now they are in the midst of changing some things. So I don't even want to offer that voice response opportunity to you because I don't even know if it's working. But if it does happen to be working, feel free to use that too. And I'll make the effort to try to figure out how to check those messages. But the best way to reach me is through the main website for the podcast, plantyourseeds.show. All right, so here we go. If you do like listening to podcasts, if you like listening to audiobooks, if you like um, turning on the read to me, <laughs> um, Speaker, speaker functions on uh, apps, like for instance, I'm a writer on the Medium platform. Uh, all of my articles, if you use the Medium app, you can listen. You don't have to uh, just read. You can press a button and listen. So if you like to do that, then definitely that's a great way for you to keep growing and learning. A lot of times people avoid reading just because they don't want to read. But you don't have to read to read. You can listen. Almost anything you can listen to because there are apps that will convert 
the text to speech for you. Uh, many of those apps are free just on the web, um, but there are some apps you can uh, pay or upgrade to get those types of features. If you're an iPhone owner specifically, if you use the um, voiceover app, <laughs> it comes with your phone, a voiceover feature rather with your phone. If you turn that on, it'll read pretty much anything to you. Caveat, <laughs> if the page has a lot of ads or something like that on it, then use the read, excuse me, I forgot what it's called. There's a little button at the top of the Safari browser. If you click it, it'll take all those ads off and it'll only be text on the page. You wanna do that before you turn on the, oh, turn on the voiceover uh, feature because the voiceover feature will read everything that's on the page if you don't. So that could be a little annoying to have it reading all of the HTTPSs and all the codes that happen to be on the page. Now, the reason that I'm, at, I'm mentioning this to you all is because part of your healing process, if you are recovering from traumas, reco recovering from some type of crises, part of your healing journey is going to have to be putting good stuff in you. Now, last episode, I talked about journaling. This episode, I'm going to talk a little bit more about your inputs, what you're reading, listening to, watching. When you are a person who is hurting, other people can't see that, but you know, you know the real. Um, if you are so self unself aware that you don't even know that you're hurting, that's a whole nother thing. And that requires therapy. So again, there's no shame in getting therapeutic support whatever way that looks like for you. It could be a psychotherapist, a person that you sit and do talk therapy with virtually or in person. It could be a different type of therapy. Sometimes people like to use somatic therapies like massage or acupuncture. Um, seems like I was talking to somebody or listening to something and they said that when they got acupuncture, it just opened them up and they had a whole, and actually, and I know for sure I have a friend who said that she got a deep tissue massage and some, it did something to them. These, these somatic therapies, they can actually open you up to help you become more self-aware of feelings that you might be shoving down. And unfortunately, this is one characteristic of traumatized black women. It just is. And I know it's not just Black people, but I'm speaking to um, the culture that I come from. We shove stuff down, y'all. We eat it down. We drink it down. We smoke it down. We sex it down. We do all kinds of things to shove those feelings down. Then when we least expect it, all that drama, all that mess pops back up at the worst time. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. So for me, I chose to start talk therapy a while ago. I've been seeing therapists for a while. Most recently, family therapy. Excuse me, I'm about to sneeze, y'all. Sorry. I was trying to wiggle it away, but it, my, wiggling my nose is not doing the trick. So the sneeze is going to come out at some point. Just warning you now. Um, Talk therapy has been extremely helpful for me. It's helped me to become more self-aware, but one of my therapists has a very much a teaching slash coaching style at times. Uh, he would recommend books for me to read, podcasts for me to listen to. He knows that I'm the kind of person that that works well for. I will um, listen and read and learn more about whatever the topic is we're talking about. And I do have some recommended reading for you that I posted in episode three show notes. So definitely check that out. Talk therapy has been extremely helpful for me when I found the right therapist. Now, I prior to this therapist, I had a therapist that just sat and looked at me and shook her head. I don't even think she wrote down notes. Maybe every once in a while she did. It was infuriating, like no feedback at all. That was not helpful for me. That kind of therapy didn't work for me. Maybe it'll work for you. So I had to find the right kind of therapist that could really help me in the way I needed to be helped. 
And now we're doing family therapy. I told y'all earlier, <laughs> we've dealt with a lot of traumatic things over the last nine months or so. So we need um, intensive family therapy. These are things that I knew our family needed. This is what I knew our family needed um, and the therapy I had on my own. I knew that's what I needed to recover. But then after you recover, who are you, right? And so we talked about that in episode three. Who do you become after all that pressure has been put on you? So this is why I gave the journal prompt. I want you all to be able to really think about these things for yourself. The choices I've made are my choices. What choices are you going to make, right? And so, like I said, this episode, I want to talk more about what your inputs are, how your inputs reading, listening, watching, how are those things impacting your process to plant your own seeds of transformation? When you think of planting, you're thinking of, you're taking action to do something. Sometimes the action that for me, that I've needed to take is shutting my mouth and listening or watching or, you know, combination listening and watching. I'm an audio visual learner. I learn best with both listening and reading. So I have a tendency to take, um, like I told you all earlier, <laughs> to take an article and turn on the voice function so I can listen to it while I read it. I purchase audible books or get free downloadable audible book, audio version books from my local library. These are things that are important to me for some reason, I don't know why, I learned much more effectively that way. When I was in graduate school, that's really what helped me get all A's. Honest truth, I, I kid you not. Every text, every um, all of our books, let me rephrase that, most of our books were electronic. And so there's a listen feature on pretty much everything because um, there's, I think, I guess, new federal requirements for accessibility. And so they have to make um, everything easier for students who may not be able to hear or may not be able to see. They have to make things more accessible for them. And so we can be the beneficiaries of these things by taking advantage of these great features. So I learn by audio visual, right? So I understand the importance of your inputs, but it's not just the importance of taking the time to listen and or watch or read. It's also the importance of what <laughs> you're consuming. What, oh, there's the cutest little boy oh, looking at me over here. It's the process of filtering for myself. What do I need or want to be listening or watching, etc. There are different seasons for different things. There are times when for me personally, it's all about sci-fi. All the sci-fi stuff, I want it all. Star Trek, Star Wars, I want it all. There are seasons for that. There are other seasons where I just wanna read and watch and listen to a lot of nonfiction things. There are seasons where memoirs are extremely um, intriguing for me. I just wanna read, watch, listen to memoirs, biographies, autobiographies. like. Um, there are several famous people who've put out their books with them, especially during the pandemic. There were a lot of people. It was like a, a explosion of memoirs <laughs> during the pandemic, um, and during the second half of the pandemic at least. And so that was really intriguing for me, listening to other people's stories, how they've survived um, the different traumas that they've been through and crises that they've been through. I still, I mean, I'm not saying that I don't still listen, watch or read any of those things, but I'm just saying there are seasons when that has been more for me for some reason, don't know why. And then there have been seasons where I was more quiet and I didn't really wanna to listen to or watch or read. I was more introspective. I wanted to do more journaling. And then there are seasons like now where it's more of a flux in between all of that now. 
there were seasons where that's all I would do was read, watch, or listen. There were seasons where I just wouldn't really listen to read or watch, listen to read or watch anything. Now it's like I'm doing both in tandem, but in cycles and phases. Um, these having your inputs be what you need is important. It's just like food cravings. I'm a firm believer that food cravings are not always bad. What's bad is when those food cravings are um, fueled by addictive substances like MSG being added to your food. There is a specific food I'm thinking of as I say this, which is why I'm laughing because I already know it has MSG in it, but I don't care. I buy it when I want it. Um, and when I say a specific food, I'll tell y'all what it is. I love a guy named Bobby from Flav City. Bobby does videos where he goes through the ingredients of whatever it is you're going to eat, be it a fast food or a grocery store item. He will look at the ingredients and break it down for you. He did that with Chick-fil-A, one of my favorite restaurant fast food places. <laughs> and he specifically talked about the chicken, ver the grilled chicken versus the chicken strips, which are fried. The chicken strips have MSG, y'all. Sorry if I just spoiled them for you. I'm sorry, but it's true. And uh, MSG is not good for your brain, and it's also addictive. And I don't care. I eat them when I want them. So I don't care. But I do care enough not to do that, over, not to go overboard with it. Um, it may be addicting, but, you know, I don't eat it every day. So, but um, there are certain things, there are not certain, just certain things, but certain times also, like if I don't feel well physically, where I'll just binge watch. And I'm, know of that I'm not the only one. This is the thing in, the, in this modern world, binge watching. Um, when I don't feel well, I will sit in my recliner chair and binge watch a whole season of a show that I like. It is what it is. I don't have, I don't feel that that's good or bad. It is what I felt I needed at that time. And then I stopped binge watching. I don't binge watch forever and ever and ever. There are seasons where you need to read certain things because it's going to nurture you in a certain way. And that's okay. But there are other seasons where you need to read something because it's required. Let's say that you have a job and you have a mandatory training to go through. You don't have a choice. You have to do the reading or you will lose a job or lose the opportunity, lose a promotion. This is something that you have to discipline yourself to do because of whatever career goal you're going after, right? Well, think about that in terms of your own emotional and mental well-being. Is there something that you really need to be reading about right now? I told you all earlier how my therapist, would, he would give me homework. He would give me assignments of specific things to read or listen to. And I did it because I knew that I needed that for my own growth. And I'm so glad that I did. I still haven't finished, you know, some of the things that he had uh, suggested to me, but I did finish some of it. And it was, it definitely um, expanded my understanding of some things. Specifically, I had recommended a book about boundaries to you all by a man named Henry J. Cloud. Um, that book, definitely shifted the way that I look at my relationships. And um, I also recommended a different book to you all um, by a different, by a female, a black female author um, on a similar subject of boundaries. There are some good books out there on these topics. Sorry, y'all, that was itching. Um, there are some really good books on this, on these topics of boundaries. When you are dealing with traumas and crises, Learning about boundaries can help you protect your healing. And I think I talked about that. No, I know for sure I talked about that two episodes ago. I think it was episode two. Let me double check so I can tell you all which one to look at. Yeah, it was episode two. Um, you want to make sure the 
the title of episode two was relationship between trauma recovery and good boundaries. When you are recovering from traumas and crises, if you just let people walk all over you, it's gonna take much longer for you to recover because what, whatever it is you're letting them do is not healing for you. You are not gonna be able to heal while you let people trample all over your boundaries. And if you are letting people trample over your boundaries because they don't know your boundaries, then who is that on? So on you. If you don't understand about boundaries, you'll never be able to do a good job with protecting them, with creating them, with understanding them, because we already have boundaries. We just don't necessarily understand what they are. So you have to understand what your boundaries are so that you can protect them. And so that you can protect them compassionately without going off on people. Because that's, in my opinion, there's a cultural thing. Black people that are in my family, <laughs> when they've gone off and curse people out or just cut people off or whatever, it's because they didn't have a proper understanding of their own boundaries that they could compassionately enforce the You're mad because you feel disrespected or mistreated but the other people around you don't even know what's going on, but you're mad at them. And that is not healthy. That's not, but it's also not healthy for your relationships. And so this is something else that a therapist can help you with. So I just want to make sure I encourage you as you're journaling, also think about your inputs. What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you watching? How is that impacting you? Is it giving you the results that you want or is it making you irritable? I'll be honest, I love Real Housewives. Not all of the shows, but definitely the Atlanta one and the Potomac one, sometimes the Miami one, okay? And then the new one in Dubai, really like that one. But I recognize, I don't think that was helping promote a good attitude for me. So I've had to pull back from some of these things. And when I watch, watch more consciously. Yeah. Because angry black woman is not what I'm going for. That's not what I'm trying to be. And so if I'm just watching a whole bunch of angry black women that don't know how to communicate, don't know how to set boundaries healthily, um, what am I gonna be getting out of that input? <laughs> what is that input going to create for my output later after I finished binge watching? And so um, I've just started becoming more cognizant about it, not judging myself, just uh, learning to understand myself. Again, we talked about this in previous episodes, the importance of learning to understand yourself better so you can be more compassionate of yourself, not so you can judge yourself or judge other people. Because when you're judging yourself, Ultimately, that's going to result in you judging other people for sure. And so being able to just say, hey, I recognize this about myself and become more curious about it. This is, again, something that they talk about within internal family systems therapeutic modalities, which we talked about in the last episode. And I gave you all a recommended uh, resource to read about that. Being more curious. Why? Am I going off on this person? Oh, I didn't sleep enough last night. Being more compassionate to yourself, not judging yourself, but understanding yourself. Why am I, you know, mad at my husband and going off on my husband? Oh, I did watch Real Housewives right before I went to sleep last night. You know, if you can see it for yourself, then you can be more compassionate towards yourself and then you can be more compassionate for other people. But if you don't even see it yourself, nobody's gonna be able to convince you or change your mind. You have to see it for yourself. So what are your inputs? And I guess this is a new journal prompt. I told y'all I wasn't gonna give you a new journal prompt, but I am. 
So your new journal prompt is what are your inputs and how are they impacting your outputs? That's your new journal prompt. What are your inputs and how are they impacting your outputs? Now, another thing I wanted to talk about before we go. I wanna talk about the fact that showing your scars is embarrassing, but exposing wounds is absolutely terrifying. That's why continuing, for me, continuing as, as a podcaster this year was so hard for me. But it's also why it was so essential for me to get back up on the horse. Overcoming that fear of vulnerability is good for me. And it's good for me in some very good ways. It helps me connect with the very vulnerable people in this audience that I've been making this podcast for. This is a whole reason I make this podcast is to help Black women leaders specifically who are getting past traumas and crises and going after their goals despite it. When you face down the fear of vulnerability, it is a way to keep pushing perfectionism back from the forefront of your life. Speaking about myself, using this podcast to reach out to other people is me facing down my own fear of vulnerability. And that has helped me to continue to push perfectionism to the side. Now, that doesn't mean that my podcast can just be shabby. One of my episodes, and I apologize to you all, I did it from my car without proper connection. And I, one of the folks that were trying to watch the live, they said they weren't even able to see the live. They had to come back and watch the replay. And then the replay, the audio on the replay is awful. So just because I'm not trying to be perfectionistic doesn't mean that I can't be better. It just means I can't make every all but I can't get better over time, right? So that's what I'm working on, making sure that my podcast is being done in a way that's more excellent, but not being unrealistic to expect myself to get everything right all the time. So I wanted to share that with you. Sometimes our wounds as they're healing, opening, like I'm talking about literal wounds, as they're healing, opening them up to the air can actually help them heal better. I would say soul wounds can be the same, but it's very, very difficult. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts to share some of the things that I've been sharing. Definitely. Um, I told you all when I started the very first episode for the season, I did not want to be on camera. I did not want to share because our family has been through so much. But I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing in this season of my life. So I'm here, y'all. <laughs> I'm here. Now, I hope that you will go back and check out the prior, especially prior episodes, but especially episode three. Today's episode is episode four. In episode three, I really want you to look at that definition of resilience and start to create your own definition of resilience. And then for episode four, and that was a journal prompt, right? And then for episode four, the journal prompt is, I don't remember y'all. <laughs> I believe the journal prompt is what are your inputs and how are those inputs affecting or creating your outputs. This is something that only you know. Nobody can judge you for that. And when you look at these things, please don't judge yourself. Please be compassionate to yourself. Just recognize things. Just think about things. Be curious about things. But please don't judge yourself for what you watch on TV or what music you listen to or what books you're, you're reading or listening to. Please don't judge yourself. Be compassionate to yourself and really think about, think about it and ask yourself questions about these things. Think of some questions to ask yourself 
about your inputs and the outputs that you see coming forth in your life. Please think about these things for yourself, for your own benefit. This is for you. This is to help you plant your seeds of transformation. This is not to do with anybody else. This is all about you. What do you need in this season of your life so that you can plant your seeds of transformation, water those seeds, and see them bring forth the results that you want to see? What are your goals? What are your dreams? Do you have to give those up just because of the traumas and the crises you've been through? I don't think you do. And I'll hope you check out uh, the past episodes to see what I had to say about that. There's also some Medium articles available at leadlikeaqueen.medium.com. But um, go, if you go to plantyourseeds.show, you'll see a link for the newsletter if you do want to sign up for the Medium uh, newsletter and, and be able to see the articles I've been writing on these topics. You are important. You are loved, number one. I believe God loves you. That's what I believe. I believe he loves you unconditionally. And he wants you to know how much he loves you. And he wants you to love yourself like he loves you. And I am a Christian. I come from the Christian faith. I believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. I believe that Jesus is love. And anything that contradicts that love is not really part of him. I believe that many people are turned off from the Christian faith because there are so many that claim it, (laughs) but don't live it. They don't have him in their hearts. They don't have his love in their hearts. And so it turns so many people off. But I believe that his love for you will transform how you love yourself because it has for me. So I just really want to tell you that I love you. (laughs) That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I send God's blessings your way. And I hope that what I've been sharing with you today and in past episodes has been a help and a blessing for you. And I really hope that you will reach out and let me know. Uh, Plantyourseeds.show is where to go for all things about This podcast, past episodes, and the show notes for this episode will be there soon. Not going to be there immediately after this because we're live, but it will be there soon so that you can um, have a recap. All right. God bless you. Please share this. If you believe that this has um, a lot of value for you, if you believe it can help somebody else, please share it. Um, If you're on YouTube, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button. Click on the notifications bell and make sure you check out the community tab. I've been sharing some things on the community tab too, just to try to make sure you all are up to date on when I'm going to be doing the lives and what else is going on. Um, Please do engage with me, leave a comment. Um, I think my comments on the community tab are open. My comments on the individual videos may not be open. So I'm sorry about that. I do not have a moderator yet. Our community is growing. I do not have a moderator yet. Once I get a moderator, then I'll be willing to open up the comments. All right. Well, y'all have a blessed day. I hope that you are staying cool wherever you are. I know a lot of places are having um, heat um, off the charts. (laughs) So I hope you're staying cool and having a great summer. God bless you. Bye-bye now.